when really the doctor should just call the hospital and get the results. I don't even know how they're ever gonna get my results at this rate, I'm gonna be dead by tonight. <laughs> special guest. Okay, that's where you're supposed to say hello. Hello. It's Frank from the Madley Party. Trying to walk her through the day or talk her through the day rather. Go ahead and uh, give her a thumbs up for doing this. Yeah, I know. You're fast forwarding through this part. Talking. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead and uh, give it up to this girl. She's awesome. And she definitely needs some support right now. Doctors are horrible. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, we have it here. It just came in, and um, did you want us to send it somewhere? Or? Yeah, could you fax it to my urologist? Okay, what's the number? Because they've actually tried to fax it to him, and they, it won't go through yeah, for some reason. Okay, I'll send it over. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, bye bye. Can you tell me if she, if that was not kind of rude? Now, if I am to call the urologist and try to ask if they get the results, I'm going to get an automated voice and an answering machine. For date of birth and the callback number with a brief message. Thank you. Bye-bye. Please leave your message at the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Hi, this is Kylie. Again, I just spoke with somebody about my urinalysis results. Um, I just called. They're saying that they've been trying to fax the results to you, but it's not going through for whatever reason. Um, so I guess if you could call them, that would be great if, if you want to give me a call back. Thanks a lot. It is absurd. So this is the kind of stuff you go through when you are dealing with chronic health conditions in the U.S medical system. Wonderful, it's a lot of fun. So, I actually have a funny story. I was going to make a video all about relaxation. That's actually my camera cord laying there, but I have my little candle set up and my yoga mat. I thought I would come out here and talk about what I do to relax and stay positive, and then I get a phone call from the hospital because I was there on Sunday, and they told me that the infection I have, like a staph infection, and that I will have to contact my urologist and my GP to find out what to do next and what medicine I need to take to get rid of it because it can get very serious and is dangerous to have a staph infection. So obviously this is a separate issue from dysautonomia. I don't want to scare anybody, but because my immune system isn't that great and I have all these other health issues, including my adrenal problems, I'm more prone to infections and to getting sick with stuff like this. So. What these doctors don't understand is my body's ability to fight off these infections is compromised because of everything that I've been dealing with and because overall my body's weak and, and my, I'm anemic right now, my blood levels are low um, and I'm chronically dehydrated. I can't drink as much, as, I'm, as much fluid as I'm losing. So that puts me in a really bad spot. It makes it hard for me to recover fully. I don't tolerate antibiotics well, so that's another challenge. But it's an even bigger challenge to try to get hospitalized for this, which would actually really benefit me because I could get fluids consistently and I could be given the medicine through IV, but that's gonna be a real challenge to try to get the doctors to do that because they see me as being 24 and healthy. So that's why Frank has been through his fair share of staph infection, so he gave me a call, which was nice. And it's good to have friends who have been there Okay, let's go to one of my favorite spots in the yard. And this is a spot that I used to go to whenever I was feeling down and scared when I was really at my sickest. I loved this about this house. I mean, how many houses have park benches? I haven't been here in a while. So there's branches everywhere. What I was going to talk to you guys about was the importance of relaxation and Paige had asked what I do when I'm anxious and 
what I do is I come outside and I take in a deep breath. And I breathe out slowly. And as I'm breathing in, I breathe in all the positive things that I can think of. And as I breathe out, I breathe out all the negative things. So if there's a lot on my mind, things that are really worrying me about my health, or maybe I feel really stressed out because I can't be the person I want to be or do the things that I want to do because I'm sick, I breathe all of that out and I let it go. And I just give it up. I say, I can control what I can control. And that is always being my best and, and doing my best and being kind. But I can't control things like being sick or things like not being able to go out when I want to or work when I want to. So I just let go of that. And I breathe in all of the things that I'm grateful for, for this house and for nature and for my wonderful friends on here, for just the fact that things could always be worse. In my favorite book, The 10 Minute Energy Solution by John Gordon, he said something about how when somebody plays golf, they don't remember all the shots they missed. They remember that one shot that they made and because of that, it fuels them to keep playing. So I try to always remember that and I try to think if I just focus on the things that are right and some days I'm not able to do that, we do have a lot to be happy about. And one of the things that we really have to be happy about is something that Leah was talking about. Leah said that when she was in Florida, she noticed the tiniest things like the way the ducklings were walking across the street or, or playing in the water. And she turned to her husband and she said, wow, this is really beautiful. When I first got sick, I could be outside and I could look at the way that the light just reflected through the leaves. I could think, you know what, things are bad, but there are so many beautiful things to be grateful for. And I don't know, I look around at the world and there's a lot of healthy, busy people and I envy them. I wish I could be busy and I'm healthy and to do the things that they're doing, but at the same time, so many of them have lost sight of what really matters and what really matters is the beauty in the world and love. So, five things that I like about myself. First thing that I like about myself is my heart. I have a big heart. I'm, I'm kind. I genuinely want the best for everybody. I'm patient with people. I try to understand where they're coming from and just be warm and kind. And I've always thought that that was just something that everybody feels, but I'm learning in life that it's not. Not everybody thinks about everybody. So I love that about myself. I care. So that's my favorite thing about myself. Second thing I like about myself is my eyes. They're big and brown and I love them. And Paige, your eyes are amazing. They are not bug eyes, they are beautiful. Wow, the branches are falling. If one comes down and hits me in the head in the middle of me telling you what I love about myself, <laughs> maybe it's God telling me I'm big headed. The third thing that I like about myself, I can have a week where I feel like I'm gonna give up and I might sob and cry and I might think that the world isn't a beautiful place and I get angry at all the things that go wrong. But at the end of the day, I pick myself back up, I dust myself off, and I move forward. And I love that about myself. So I guess my perseverance. My fourth thing that I love about myself, that I love to laugh, and my last thing would be that I am very open-minded. So when I meet somebody who has an opinion that other people might not understand or agree with, or somebody who seems a little bit eccentric or different, I'm very open to that because I'm unique myself and I love unique people and hearing different points of views. Leah, you asked if we could handle that ride that Dave posted. I don't think I could, but I could handle watching it, but watching it and being on it are two different things. I got my legs propped. <laughs> Oh, and I just wanted to say, Nikki, I loved your video where you had on your cow hat. I thought that was amazing. I want a cow hat. I think everybody should have a cow hat. And if you haven't watched Nikki's video, go ahead and watch it. It's in our favorites. So I guess I'm gonna wrap this up. It's getting long. Um, my question is, what is one simple thing in life that you really enjoy and you really appreciate that 
kind of makes you realize life is worth living no matter how bad it gets. Mine is nature, being outside. Like the really, really simple things like having a picnic or like Nikki said in her video about just sprouting beans in your yard, the simple things. What is it that you This is like turning into a hurricane, I gotta get going. <laughs> but what are your, what are your favorite simple things? I love you guys.